Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You're listening to episode number 75 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Rebecca Strong, author of the book, Who is Mr. Pluton? Vika is a ditzy New Yorker until she learns she's an elite Russian spy and the only thing standing between her husband and the overthrow of the Russian president. Two superpowers, one female agent, and no second chances, and plenty of caviar. What can go wrong? Rebecca Strong is a writer and an artist. She's always careful about her acquaintances, and her knowledge of geopolitical rivalries is purely accidental. Again, her book is called Who is Mr. Pluton? You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 75. So Rebecca, it's such a pleasure to have you as a guest today. Uh, my first question, My first question for you is this. Why did you decide to write and publish this book? Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's actually an interesting episode that happened to me because I was I was born in Russia and I, I left when it was still the Soviet Union and um, lived in the West for a very long time. And then I happened to come back to Russia for, for work, uh, for my husband's work. And I spoke perfectly fluent Russian, but I no longer really knew how things functioned. And so one time I went into a bakery and... Um, you know, I, I was trying to pay for the cake and the woman looked at me and was like, you don't know how you're supposed to pay for the cake. And there was this whole procedure where you had to take a piece of paper, then go to the cashier, pay the cashier. She would give you another piece of paper. And I just kind of blanked it. I forgot that that's how it was. Um, and so I thought about it and I thought, huh, what if we have a protagonist that suddenly doesn't have any idea how to operate in this environment, but but she is from this environment. And so basically that's how it happened. And I started writing it um, when we were still in Russia. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. I love I love that you took personal experience and and, and that's what inspired yeah. the snowball. Yeah. That's awesome. So is this your is this your only book that you've written? Yep. It's uh, my first novel. It's the only uh, fiction, yeah, that I've written. How how was that journey for you? Like when you decided, you know what, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into a book. Like how 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 was it? Was it easy for you to create this book, or did you feel like um, you you came across some challenges? It, it was it was easy in the beginning because the voice and the character came to me really really quickly. Like she was there before I even started, and then the setting because I was still living in Russia and the ridiculousness of what's happening around you. Because you know the book, um, you know it kind of uh, it goes from one genre to another, and part of it is social satire. So the setting was there. I you know a lot of things that um, the main protagonist sees or experiences I didn't even make up. It happens. So, um, you know, that was easy. And then, um, you know, because there's a thing that happens to her and I don't really want to give any spoilers, um, the ending was kind of hard. But then, you know, I figured it out at some point. So, yeah, the ending was a little more difficult than the rest of it. Awesome. So you said that you started writing this book when you were still living in Russia. Did you start writing it in Russian and then in English or did you start writing it in English all the way through? Oh no, it was it was entirely started in English. Um, I was living in Russia, you know, 17 years after I left initially and after being and studying in the States. So, you know, all okay. of my writing I do in English. So no, no, no. I started writing it immediately in English. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I, I didn't know if I should assume that or not, but I'm, I'm, I was just curious. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, sure. Because you know, speaking to you, you've got, you've got better English skills than I do. Oh, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, that's good. <laughs> um, did you, did you hire an editor at, at all when you put this book together? Well, I had um, an editor through my publisher, so they, you know, I still make mistakes with articles like A and the. It's still, you know, it's just uh, an unknown, <laughs> an unknown part to me. I don't know how and when and you know so but you know I mean as far as editing my publisher had all of the editors that um, it's gone through a lot of editing and copy editing and um, yeah so it was it was done in the publishing house that published the book 
Very cool. Very cool. Um, so switching gears a little bit, what's the most unusual thing your readers have said about reading your book? Well, there were actually a couple. One of them, and that's, you know, happened a couple of months ago, is there were a couple of people that said that it was very Kafkaesque. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. Someone's comparing this to Kafka. You know, that's kind of nice. And I think if the reader starts reading, they'll un understand uh, that it's not necessarily la the language that's very Kafkaesque, but what happens to the protagonist and how she gets out of it. And no, she does not become a bug. But um, I guess the readers would have to figure out what happens um, once they start reading. And the second thing somebody just said to me recently, um, he said, oh, it could be a great instruction manual for um, for men, for foreign men who want to date women who grew up um, and were raised in Russia. And I'm like, huh, what? <laughs> and and he said, yeah, you know, I think it's uh, it's perfect. They should all read your book. So that was really interesting. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. That's Weird. great. Yeah. You could you could publish it under another name and have, you know, the same exact book but two different titles. One is Who is Mr. Pluton and the other is How to Date an American. Exactly. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. such great feedback. Awesome. Um, so I'm looking at your book cover. I love, 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 love the graphic here. Uh, Thank it's you. Russian dolls, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's the, the two that stand out. Obviously, one is Vika, I'm yeah. guessing, and the other the other is Mr. Pluton. If another one is just yes. <laughs> and if oh, just, that, oh, okay. <laughs> somebody she's giving a side eye to, yes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Oh, that's so clever. How did you come up with this image? Um, my publisher started without the side eye. So the first version they sent me was just the Russian dolls and the man. And I'm like, what? It just doesn't even fit. And, you know, because when you read the book, you realize that it's a very humorous and very fun book. So there has to be, you know, some sort of idea of mystery, but also idea of fun. And there's a mystery in what we see the man, but there's like no fun, no like, you know, kind of like poking fun at things. And so, um, and then somebody in my writing group suggested, what if you have one of them give the guy a side eye? And I was like, this is perfect. And once we did that, that little touch, it just worked. Perfect. Perfect. So there's, so there's definitely something to be said about being in a writing group. Oh, yeah. uh, how did, how did you find this writing group? Um, just by sheer coincidence, um, there is a, um, uh, well-known forums apps absolute rate.com you may have heard of them and so I asked a question and I said oh I just recently moved here and uh, you know I had a question about something else and whoever responded was actually going to that writers group and he said oh why don't you come and join us so I just met everybody there and we've made great friendships and uh, yeah it's it's been amazing so yeah awesome and what's what's been your biggest challenge with writing and publishing this book and how did you overcome it well, the biggest challenge was actually finding um, either an agent or a publisher who was willing to take it on because it's 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 such a multi-genre thing. You know, it's women's fiction, but it's also satire. It's also a little bit of mystery. It's a little bit of espionage. And so and also it has to do with Russia and the Russian president. And, and you know, all of these things were kind of really uh, it was making it difficult. And then um I basically found my publisher on Twitter. It was really funny. I just did one of those uh, tweeting, pit mad, pitching orgies, you know. And um, and it usually never works for my genre, but it did. And, you know, that's how I found my publisher. It was really interesting. I had an article come out about it on Writer's Digest in the February issue. So in this month's issue, there's an article about how I found my publisher on Twitter. And so that was a big challenge. And you know, it worked out with social media. Interesting. That's awesome. Because I would have never thought you could do that. That's, that's I know. amazing. I never did awesome. either. Yeah. Now, now, why did you choose to go the route of getting a publisher and agent versus self-publishing? Um, I always felt like I wanted to go through traditional publishing. I wanted to hold a book in my hand that was published by a publishing house, either small or big. And so it just, I just wanted to do that. And I've, been, I've, I've sent about 119 query letters. So that's like, that's a lot, you know, and they say wow. that you haven't lived until you sent a hundred. So after I saw that I was like 119, I was like, oh my God, something is just needed change. And it was literally the next day that I saw that pitching um, thing that was going on. And I said, well, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. 
and boom, it happened. Awesome. What a great inspiration. This is fantastic. Awesome. So are you planning on writing a sequel for this novel? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually working on it. And um, I think um, she's is going to be well I'm not gonna open any cards so yes um it's going to be around her again and she's going to be the protagonist and uh, she's going to be involved in some really fun adventures so yes awesome and what do you love most about being an author um well writing in my pajamas comes very close to the top um writing in a cafe um, observing and you know another thing is um, the curiosities that happen to you in life like that trip to a bakery that actually started my book or something that I would observe around me and say hey that's an interesting story to write and I would write that so I think it's it's watching the world and and transcribing it and just telling stories that's really fun Wow. Wonderful. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, thanks again for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 75 to learn more about our author and her wonderful book. Thanks again, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Are you ready to write your own book? Get started now with my quick and concise webinar so you can learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing your own book. Claim your free gift now at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic. Feel good, make magic now. Lena and Nani will show you how. Ignite that wisdom inside of you. And show the world what you do. To publish, write, and promote. Learn the best way to go.